would be willing to house this pastor from South America in my home because I also because I spoke English. So he thought I would be, you know, rendering good hospitality to him. So I was more than happy to, and we had a good time of fellowship with each other. And this guy could really preach. Anyway, a few years later, this pastor, this Argentinian pastor, moved from Argentina to America to pioneer another work in California. I later heard him share a story about when he had just arrived in America. He said when his family first came to California, they started to receive in the mail and the newspaper a lot of coupons. Any women here collect a lot of coupons? Use coupons? I mean, you know, if you know how to use them properly, you can really save a lot of money. You can get a lot of, you know, extra items. So he mentioned that in his country, though, in Argentina, they never give anything for free. He says, nothing. Therefore, Pastor Ortiz did not trust those coupons. <laughs> and he told his wife, Martha, he says, Martha, don't use those coupons because it must be a trap. Who knows what they'll get you into if you use them. So he was very skeptical, and they never use these coupons. But one day, Pastor Ortiz went to the pizza shop, and there was a man before him in the line, and the man ordered his pizza and paid $12.50. So he was next in line, and so Pastor Ortiz also ordered the same large pizza as the man before him, and also paid $12.50. After waiting for a while, they finally called the man, and they gave him two large pizzas. When Pastor Ortiz saw that, he said to himself, Oh, I thought it was too expensive to pay $12.50 just for one pizza. Oh, I understand now. Okay. However, he said, when it came to me, they gave me only one pizza. He said, wait a minute, sir. To that man, I paid the same amount as he, and you gave him two pizzas, but I get only one. How come? <laughs> oh, it's because he brought a coupon, said the cashier. So the cashier showed him. He said, see, it says, buy one and get the second one free. Mmm, <laughs> so the coupons are free. And the coupons are true, rather, said Pastor Ortiz. Yes, they're for real, said the cashier. When Pastor Ortiz went home that day, he told his wife, the coupons are for real. <laughs> he says, let's start collecting them, especially the pizza ones. <laughs> Now, folks, just a thought. This Bible is kind of like a coupon book. <laughs> it's a coupon book of the promises, precious promises of God. Amen. And every one are true and there for real. Yeah. Hallelujah. But unlike normal coupons, you don't have to buy anything. It's totally free because it's all been paid for, compliments of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Isn't that what the Bible says? In Romans 8.32, it says, He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If God spared not his son, why would he not with him give us freely all things? Jesus is the best. So if he gave us the best, why would he hold back the rest? <laughs> Amen? Amen? 
So anything that you need, all the precious promises in this wonderful coupon book, it's free. Yeah. And it's true and it's for real. Yeah. And we can experience that. Hallelujah. All we have to do is believe. Believe that you receive them and the scripture says you shall have them. All you need is faith. Now turn with me to Hebrews 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews. Thank you, Jesus. You were in 2 Peter. Just go back a couple of books and you'll come to James and then Hebrews. Hebrews 11, looking from verse 6. It says here, but without faith, it is what? Impossible to please Him. Wow, and I, I believe we as children of God, we want to please our Father. We want to please the Lord. And so, if it is impossible to please Him without faith, wow, we should really desire and pursue to know how we can get faith Amen. hallelujah but without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him hallelujah wow. then why is it that when people try to believe for God's promises by diligently praying and earnestly confessing the word of the Lord, that their prayers don't get answered? <clears throat> Let me try to answer by the following example and explanations. Now, we've been going over this illustration so much it should be coming out of your ears by now. <laughs> Remember when Adam fell, he plunged the whole world into sin and everybody came into a place of an unsaved condition. And we all receive the nature of the flesh. This is a sin nature. We told you the flesh is made up of two parts. It is made up of the evil part, and it is made up also of the good part. So, when you think that person is in the flesh, that doesn't only mean that he's doing bad things. He can be also doing good things, and yet be in the flesh. So, we said, if the evil part of the flesh does works, we call that what? Bad works. And if the good part of the flesh does works. We call that dead works. Yes, dead works. A lot of people would say, oh, that's good works. But no, God, remember, calls it dead works, which means anything that we do from the flesh, because it is a polluted source. Remember, this is a polluted source. If, if it is a polluted source, if the root is contaminated and polluted, then what's going to happen to the fruits? Same thing. They're also going to be contaminated and it's going to be polluted. Dead works are works that people do that are seemingly good. As far as the world is concerned, horizontally, yes, they are good works when you help your neighbor, when you work hard and you provide for your children, or if you do community services, or if you give to charity. Yes, there are good things and it is very helpful. But those things, if you think it would count for heaven, and it gives you brownie points before God, so that that qualifies you to have eternal life, then God says that's dead works. That's right. Amen. If you do it with the wrong motive also, it is dead works. Remember I said, if I tell you, I want to kiss you, she says, 